Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Sitting out here with a rather sad looking plant. A very, very sad looking plant. I've had multiple people, not a ton, but a few people, enough to go ahead and make a video about it, have asked me about what to do when you've had plants show up looking pretty sad and pathetic in the mail. It's probably a rising problem, right? Given the current times, shipping is pretty delayed. Then I'd pull out the camera and we can talk about what I do with sad plants. <laughs> when they've, they've showed up looking pretty pathetic. This one looks pretty bad. Now, what I do isn't going to be universal across for all plants, but more for aeroids specifically. Right now, I'm dealing with a philodendron here. This is a philodendron deflexum. Don't know how it's going to show up there. If it doesn't, I'll put it up on the screen. The deflexum is formerly a megalophyllum, so if you're having trouble, you want to do some research on it, and try megalophyllum. Might be able to get more information on it that way. I don't plan on talking too much about this specific philodendron. We can go over some fun things about it, I suppose, towards the end of the video. For now, I just want to focus on what to do about all of this. This plant specifically was in the mail for about two and a half weeks. It's one of those things where the shipping just kept saying that it, at first it said it was delivered and that clearly wasn't true and the next day it said running late. Then there just weren't any updates for a whole entire week and then lo and behold it showed up today. Today being like one of the coldest days we've had in the last couple weeks. So when I unboxed this plant it felt like an ice cube. I thought about actually doing an unboxing with this particular philodendron because it's one that I really like and I was pretty excited to be able to get a hold of. But it, the situation with it being in the package for such a long time and then that package being ice cold, I wanted to get it opened and out of that package as soon as possible, <laughs> giving it some TLC. It's the poor thing. I have this one sitting in a vase. That's only because it's so incredibly top heavy that it just tips over, falls over, and that's not great for the plant. So this is just to provide a little bit more of a sturdy set up for the plant. So the first thing that I actually did with this was just leave it alone. I took it out of the box. I left it sitting on my counter for about, I'd say a good hour to let it come up to room temperature because like I said, it was very cold. Plant could be doomed. We'll talk more about that. I'm just going to resume everything as if hopefully the plant's going to be fine. But with all that in mind, this is not at all a cold hardy philodendron, not one bit. However, there's a good amount of stem in here on this plant. So even if it does end up defoliating completely, if over the next few weeks all of these leaves come off, hopefully that stem will still be good and there's lots of connections on there, lots of nodes. So could always bag and sag it, where that's where you put some moist sag and moss into a Ziploc bag and get that in there and it would probably take root and start growing again. First thing to do is to let it come up to room temperatures. There's no sense in moving the plant around while it's cold. The plant cells in there are just gonna break apart, fall apart. It's not much elasticity in there, so just end up breaking the plant. I haven't taken this out of the plastic yet just because I assumed I was Probably have to be a little bit rough with it. So again, wanted to let it rest and warm up first. I'll go ahead and get this plastic off of here so that those roots can breathe. I can water it and then handle the situation with the foliage and see what needs to be done to help get this plant off to a better start. There we go, that should do it. The soil isn't really damp. The packaging, there's a little bit of moisture here on this paper towel, so that's good. But in here, pretty dry, which is good. I would not want this to be wet when it's been out in the cold. That, be the kiss of death. If that were cold and wet, that would drastically, drastically increase the risks of root rots. Generally, the first thing to do with a new plant that comes in the mail is water it, right? In this particular situation, I'm going to go ahead and prune off the old foliage first. I'm just using some scissors. I lost my snippers. So I'm using scissors. These have been dipped in isopropyl rubbing alcohol, so they're nice and clean. I'm going to go and make my cut as close to the stem as possible and I'm only removing the leaves that are useless. Like this is useless. There's no chlorophyll left in there. Don't need it. And that's going to be the same thing. There's some green up here in this one, but not enough. I'd rather get it off of there. If it's dying, it's not doing the plant any good. If there's not much chlorophyll in the leaf, it's not doing the plant any good. I would always rather the plant be focusing its energy on recovering and reestablishing itself instead of having to deal with pathogens or potential infections, which brings me to the next point. What I would normally do next is I would just take one of these little cotton swabs here, damp it down, moisten it up with clean water and put that in cinnamon powder. And I would take that cotton swab and dab that over those cuts that I just made, those two cuts. 
What that will do is help dry that out and callus it and seal it up so that things can't get in there and infect the plant. As you can imagine, when plants come in looking like this, they're gonna be more vulnerable to pathogens, diseases, and pests. I am completely out of cinnamon powder, so you just have to take my word for it. I swear it works. Sulfur powder is also always an option. I tend to steer clear of sulfur powder just because it's toxic. I don't want it around me. I'm in an enclosed space here. I don't want to risk inhaling it. I don't want it getting into the water. Something I stay away from unless I absolutely, like, really, really need it and it's a serious infection. That's normally only something I end up doing for cactus. For aeroids, the cinnamon powder usually works just fine. Okay, now I will water the plant, give it a good drink. If it's necessary, this is when it would be a really good time to actually go ahead and give the plant a soak. So I will probably end up getting this water to go through that soil and then I'll lift this disc out. This disc down here is for holding bulbs. This is for like forcing tulips or hyacinths, that sort of thing. I'm just using it in this application because it's kind of nifty to lift the plant up. Right now, the poor thing just needs a drink. It's probably so thirsty. I mean, it is a philodendron, but still, doesn't mean it wants to be bone dry and it's been in the mail for a long time. Potentially been, you know, maybe three weeks since this plant had any water. And since it's been in the dark, and it's been cool. It's not really the end of the world for it. It's one of the philodendrons that's considered a little bit more sturdy, but it's still not ideal. I mean, if this were in normal growing conditions, three weeks without water, unless it's really, really, really humid, that would probably not go well for the plant. When it's cool and dark, it's probably okay. You might be able to see up here, there is one leaf that was questionable. It has some yellow markings on it, you can see up there. And left that, obviously, as you can see. I didn't cut that off because the majority of the leaf is still green, so I think it should be fine. Sometimes cold damage can take a while to fully show itself on a plant. That's why I like to go ahead and make sure to get off the bad foliage, seal off any cuts that are made, and just kind of sit back and leave it alone. Like I said, since it just came in the mail, I am going to go ahead and actually soak it down here in this water. You can, depending on the plant, soak them Sometimes overnight is fine. I've done that before. I think I need to add some more water into there. I want the water to be probably close to about a third of the way up. Sometimes people will go all the way up. This kind of depends on the plant. With this one, I don't think that that's really going to be necessary because considering this plant spent like about, about two and a half weeks in the mail, it didn't look that bad. It had a couple of bad leaves, which that could have been from the cold. I can't say for certain. There was a heat pack in the box. You know, those are only usually good for a few days at the most. And that felt more like a giant ice cube, like an ice pack when I pulled it out of the package. So for now, what I really need to do is just kind of leave the plant alone. I probably shouldn't even be touching it this much, but it just, it has such nice leaves. They're so smooth and so shiny. They feel nice. I'm going to let it have that drink and then I'm going to take that water out and dispose of it. And then I'll go ahead and put this disc back in there and lift the plant up and put just a little bit of water in the bottom. That way there can be some humidity coming up around the plant. That's why these bulb vases can be nifty when you need to rehydrate a plant like a philodendron where the humidity is going to help them as far as rehydrating an awful lot, but soaking them is kind of a hit or miss if they're already vulnerable. And I consider this plant to be a vulnerable plant because, I mean, you saw it. Still not one that I'm particularly all that concerned about. Within, I would say, two to three weeks, I'll feel okay enough to go ahead and give this a repot. I would prefer to do now because <laughs> that's in a very, very, very tiny pot. But this setup for this particular plant, it's going to work pretty well as far as keeping it stable, having that disc under there, being able to have some water under there to help keep the air a little bit more moist around that root system. Not particularly a situation where I'd want to repot right away. I need to give this some time to adjust. Really anytime you get a new plant waiting, sometimes a few weeks is a good idea to let them adjust to your new environment. That's Things get kind of complicated there. It really sort of depends on where you live and what kind of growing media the plant's in and where it came from. Sometimes it's a good idea to go ahead and repot right away if, you know, you're maybe you live in like Arizona, someplace that's really, really, really dry, but the plant was shipped up from Miami and it's in a potting mix that is just going to dry out way too fast because in Florida, that mix that it's in needs to dry quickly. If the plant's grown down in Florida where it's extremely humid, lots and lots of rain, then it, the mix needs to dry really fast. But if you live in like the Southwest and the air is extremely dry, that mix really isn't going to work very well for your particular environment. So it's hard to say when to go ahead and do the repots. I generally like to wait two to three weeks. That's just as long as everything is meshing up together the way it's supposed to. My humidity in here is decently high. I think I'm around 82% right now. 
temperatures 77 so there shouldn't be any issues with that mix that's in there i think it'll probably be perfect but that is still something to keep an eye on i did not notice any foul odors coming out of the soil that's an important thing to pay attention to because that can be a symptom of root rot i haven't noticed any creepy crawlers anywhere on the plant i mean i didn't lift it out and check the roots which isn't always a terrible idea but when it's just come in the mail I'd wait if it's potted up in something already, just to be safe. We give them at least a few days to adjust before lifting them out. And even then, I could be very, very gentle. With this plant specifically, I'm just going to be very, very patient. I'll give it a few weeks and I'll get to see those roots when it's time to repot the plant. With smaller plants, using a glass bell works really well. I have with plants before, this is getting kind of extra, not saying you should do it, but sometimes that stores like Petco, it's a big chain pet store here in the US, they have dollar per gallon sales on their fish tanks and you can pick up like a 20 gallon fish tank and uh, they actually make fairly good little humidity, like miniature quick set up terrariums to toss new plants in when they come in the mail if they're ones that are moisture lovers and maybe they're plants that are gonna have a little bit of a struggle adjusting to your environment or just need time to adjust from shipping is what I should say. Having a tank around can be really nifty. I've never Purchase the glass tops that go on top of them, just saran wrap, help hold the moisture in, and that's worked really well too. Sometimes those glass bells can get kind of pricey. I have a whole bunch of them because I love the way they look, but they do get expensive, especially for the really, really big ones. I have one that this could fit in, but it's occupied right now. And when doing that kind of method, you also have to remember that the plant's going to have to adjust to coming out of that glass environment eventually, if it's a plant that gets large, at least, right? It's not realistic to keep something like this that eventually gets leaves that are like three feet long. You can't keep that in a glass enclosure forever, not even for very long. So I have to keep in mind that getting the plant out of that glass environment is also sometimes a struggle and can be difficult for the plant. It's something to do slowly. You want to just slowly make it more and more dry every day. Like I, you know, drop the humidity by 5% maybe a week something like that and slowly introduce the plant to being exposed and having air movement it's essentially just like hardening off a perennial that you would put outside just completely different because it's a plant that's in a glass dome and not something that needs to be made to resist cold and wind oh and i probably should have mentioned the water it's just room temperature water not hot not cold just water that's not going to shock the plant also a good idea to not put the plants right into a super bright environment they've been in the dark for a while that can shock the plant cause photo oxidation which is a fancy word for the foliage bleaching out we don't want that to happen so not only do they need a few weeks to adjust their new environment they're also i'd say give them a few weeks to adjust to their light when they're in rough shape like this you can see the leaves up here kind of dirty dusty there's some buildup on there i would prefer to have that off so that the pores on the surface of that plant are nice and clean so that it can transpire properly and photosynthesize properly don't need anything clogged up however I think it would be a bad idea right now to be doing much more than what I've already done. That's something where myself, I'd wait like at least 24 hours for the plant to be able to rehydrate and make sure that those cell walls are nice and full and not gonna be flimsy or easily bruised. And then I'll get those leaves cleaned off. That's really gonna bother me. I know I pretty much always say on this channel that when it comes to thirsty plants, the only thing we should be doing with them is watering them. So uh, watering the plant before cutting those bad leaves off probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. I maybe should have done that. Since that soil didn't feel like it was completely bone dry, I figured it was probably okay to go ahead and cut those leaves off first instead of waiting until tomorrow when the plants had more time to hydrate. It was just kind of a roll in the dice situation there. It's to my understanding that these particular philodendrons are pretty sturdy, so I'm not that worried about this plant specifically. I've had other plants come in the mail that looked way, way worse than this. And like I said, even if over the next few weeks it does completely defoliate, because cold damage can take a little while to do its thing and wreak all of its havoc, even if that does happen, I am confident that there will still be enough good stem in here to go ahead and get the plant going again. All right, okay, this has had enough time to soak. When the plants are already potted up into a media and they're not shipped bare root, that's when I'm more hesitant about soaking the plants. If the plant were bare root, then I would soak it a lot longer, but that's not going to be necessary in something like this because there's moisture in that media, in the bark chips, there's some sphagnum moss in there. But really 10 or 15 minutes in this kind of situation is probably just fine. I think that's pretty much it for this one. I don't have a lot else to say specifically about the plant. Like I said, it's this isn't really a spotlight video on this particular plant. It is a neat philodendron though. Like I said, they get 
really, really big, long leaves on them, kind of like the Melanochrysums, but they're not as cool looking as the Melanochrysum, in my opinion. As this grows, once it gets attached to something and starts climbing, eventually, someday, far off in the future, this will have really big, long leaves to three feet. I doubt I'll be able to pull that off in my environment, but maybe. Who knows? We'll see. And the leaves hang just like this as they're climbing up, but three feet long. How cool is that? That's going to look really cool. I look forward to that, especially because it's a more sturdy plant. Like there are some plants out there that get those really, really long leaves on like the Warroquium, the Anthurium, that I love that, I mean, I can't really compare these other than the fact that they get big, long leaves. That's about it. And they're aeroids. There's a big difference in price and care and appearance though, right? I mean, the Warroquiums are absolutely gorgeous plant. The veining on those leaves are just mesmerizing. Whereas this, I think it's a beautiful plant, has really nice shiny leaves. It's just, it's definitely not the same. However, more sturdy, much less fuss. This is from Equigenera, which also, mixed bag, never really know what you're going to get, but I'd say I'm pretty pleased with this. The shipping situation is not their fault. Uh, they sent it out and it should have arrived and it just didn't. There's a lot going on with things right now in postage, so I'm not shocked by that. We were having a really mild month, so I figured it would be safe to go ahead and order some tropicals. And it showed up just in time. It, got, I mean, it would have been better if it had showed up like 12 hours earlier. Wouldn't have been a problem, but cold moved in right when the plant got here. So I don't know how long it was sitting out on the porch. I don't think it was too terribly long. But, you know, it doesn't always take that long to do damage. We will see. Stay posted. The plant will be around in the vlogs in the background of things and probably going to see some more declining health with some of the leaves, I mean, particularly the one up here that has that yellow on it. I don't have high hopes for it, but we'll see. Okay, that's going to do it. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions are always appreciated. It's impossible to remember everything to say in these videos, so the comment section is a great place to get more advice and to learn about things. What do you do with your plants when they show up looking sad and unruly unhealthy especially when it comes to cold damage that's when things like get way 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 more scary cold and heat both ends of the spectrum not good oh and i should mention if there were a foul odor in that soil then i would have gone ahead pulled the pot from that potting media that's in there giving it a good rinse a spray down with uh, hydrogen peroxide and then let that sizzle and do its thing give it another rinse and repot it into a new pot with fresh media since it's a more sturdy philodendron Maybe we'd even leave it out for a day or so to try and make sure that things could dry off around that root zone. And then there's always the option of treating with copper-based fungicides, fungicides in general, but that can be more risky sometimes when it comes to plants that have delicate roots. Neem is always, of course, an option. It is technically a fungicide. It just smells terrible, so I tend to not use it unless I absolutely have to. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.